So I got a couple things to say. So Beast, I may not be the biggest. Tessa Blanchard, I may not be the baddest. But I am the best at what I do. Beast, you got a long way to go, baby, before you take my spot. And Tessa Blanchard, why don't you go home and run to daddy? Oh, wait, or is it your stepdaddy that you go and cry to? You know, when we all have our 15 minutes of fame, and I'd like to take a couple of my 15 minutes to talk about the rights and the wrongs in the world of professional wrestling. This match is for the ECW World Heavyweight Championship! Welcome to another edition of the Rights and Wrongs of Pro Wrestling Podcast with another review of WOW! Women of Wrestling. The opening tag delivered by David McClain week in and week out whenever that show is available. Hi, I am your host, Mr. Green, and we are on episode 23 as we go through the unaired episodes of wow and for those of you that might not have uh, listened to anything previously or not have heard about wow yes they have more episodes available than those that aired on access tv there's an entire lost season we'll we'll call it lost or or, or like i said before unaired and they have uploaded all of them and if you uh, wanted to see that, there is no cost. Everything is there the entire season, I guess, which would have been season three for Access Television, but they did not uh, choose to continue that route. And you can see it on either the CW app or Pluto TV. As it stands right now, I believe Pluto TV doesn't have a channel dedicated to WOW as of this recording. I know a lot of people look at Pluto and it's you know, kind of taken as a live uh, air product or, or a set of channels within its own little universe. But uh, in order to see it, you have to go to the, the uh, on-demand portion of Pluto TV and you have to scroll down and find it. Uh, same thing with the CW app. I will say there's not, neither of which I believe are very convenient. You know, um, why wow doesn't seem to be had be uh, presented good virtual real estate as far as uh, their uh, finding their program is concerned. You, you, it's not difficult to find, but you know, it's not right in front of your face either. That's probably the best way I could put it. Anyhow, as of this recording, you know, there's been a, a couple of little tidbits and things that uh, you know I just have to say before we roll over into talking about wow and the matches and the whole nine yards bef- that uh you know that they present before i had uh talked about how some of the wow individuals may or may not be coming back just based on uh you know where they are and uh, what other things they may be doing in the interim of WoW having this lengthy, lengthy hiatus. Well, and I, I know I'm not pronouncing her name right. I'm sure I'm butchering it. So I'm going to use her WoW name. Her last name is Shaw. I've been saying Gis- Giselle. But uh, I could be pronouncing that incorrectly. Somebody may need to give me a, a phonetic spelling of her name so I can say it correctly. Uh, on the show, she's Reyna Reyes. So if you're watching Wild, that's who you're looking at. Uh, 
She just signed a deal with uh, Impact Wrestling. She has uh, now officially joined their roster. Now, before, Impact Wrestling had no problems with people kind of crossing the streams and being on both programs at the same time. Um, we can look back at the uh, other the past seasons on Access TV. We can look at Kira Hogan. We can look at uh, uh, Jessica Havoc. And I want to say, uh, who else? Uh, Alicia Edwards and probably two other ones that are escaping. Well, uh, uh, Havoc's partner, Nevaeh. Nevaeh was there at the time also. And I, I know I'm missing one, but the, the point being is that Impact Wrestling at that time did not seem to want to create any issues as related to some of the ladies who wanted to be part of the show. Which didn't seem like a big deal because, A, both of them tape. They just, you know, record the shows and then they edit it from that point out. So it wasn't going to be in a case of working against each other as far as a uh, uh, appearing on the show. Maybe the taping schedule, quite possibly. But even that was kind of slim. Uh, but I don't know. I wonder if that is going to be the case now. Because one of the other elements that they had at the time was that both Impact Wrestling and WoW existed on the same network. As you know, or maybe you don't, Access TV is owned by Anthem. Anthem also owns Impact Wrestling, which is a lot of the reason that some of those things would take place when uh, New Japan was pulled off and WoW was canceled. It wasn't because the ratings were bad. It wasn't because they did something stupid. It was because uh, Anthem, at that point, wanted to focus all their wrestling attention on their own product, or at least the promotion that they had in their their uh, their own hands. Um, but they were on the same network back, back at that point, so them existing between the two promotions or the two shows, most specifically, was not a bad thing. Uh, once Anthem got a hold of it, that changed the entire dynamic of that. So much to the point that, you know, like I said, New Japan was let go. And the was let go. If you weren't going to work with Impact Wrestling, then they had no need for you. Co you know, coincidentally, New Japan is returning to Access TV. So they may start up their wrestling block again. Who knows? But, um... Like I said, it's going to be interesting to see whether or not Impact Wrestling blocks Miss Shaw or Raina Reyes from participating with WOW. And they put her time at Impact Wrestling as a priority. That'll, that'll be interesting to see. Uh, also, AQAs has signed with uh, AEW. Some of y'all may know her from uh, Booker T's Reality of Wrestling in Texas. I think she had a brief stint in the former gold and black brand version of NXT before she was cut. And uh, she came in and uh, took on an open challenge to uh, go against Jade Cargill. So they fed her a new face for, for her to beat up and then move on. Because, you know, that's pretty much all they ever did. So, anyhow. Now we move on, and you know there, there's there's other things that have taken place, and, and, but we won't go into real deep detail because I try to keep this as related to WoW as I can. Uh, but I will say one other thing, you know the the, uh, the whole thing with Ronda Rousey popping back up in WWE, which wasn't a big secret. Uh, I think everybody was expecting it by the time she showed her face in the uh, Royal Rumble, but her getting over on Sonya Deville but Naomi's been dealing with this for months <laughs> at this point without any real rhyme or reason at it, you know by the way that they, they still haven't explained what her deal is with Naomi it just is it just just happens and she just gives her a hard time just for the sake of giving her a hard time and now it is announced that they have a tag team match coming up in Dubai where uh, du DeVille and Flair are going to take on Naomi and Rousey. 
And I'm almost positive that it'll be Rousey that'll tap out DeVille in that match. Time will tell. On to the review. Episode 23 of WOW. And we start off, you know, they, they've got a good formula here. Recap, bring people up to speed, move it to a promo, move it to the match. That seems to be the pattern that we've established with WOW. So let's get to that. The first segment that they had was a recap of Fire and Adrenaline, winning the tag team titles, <coughs> which basically sets up for them later on in the show. A match against Amber O'Neill and Jesse Jones. Now, on the independent circuit, they are referred to as Grits and Glam. I don't know if they still carry that name, and I certainly do not remember that name being utilized in the wild programming. So that might be something, but they did keep their tag team for a, a number of weeks, if not months, uh, leaving WoW. Or I shouldn't say leaving, but well, during WoW's hiatus. So, just wanted to pass out. That's not really incidental to the show necessarily, but just to know that you know that this was a legitimate tag team. They they took that act on the road, which is good for them. But that's all the, the opening thing is. It's just a, a real setup for what's coming later. Segment two, Jungle Girl comes in the ring and she cuts a promo on the Beast and Tessa Blanchard. Erica Porter, a.k.a. Jungle Girl, is good at what she does in these promos. They, uh, I don't know if they're writing it for her word for word necessarily, but it usually comes across as something that is easily felt by her. Uh, Tessa Blanchard attacks Jungle Girl after Jungle Girl insults Tessa's father and stepfather. Of course, you know, Tully Blanchard being a father, Magnum T.A. being a stepfather. And she came out to, to uh, have words with her about that. Uh, I'm not sure where this is going with Tessa Blanchard. Now, keep in mind, I believe that the majority of this was shot and recorded Either during the time that she was having the issues with, you know, people calling her out online or just before it. So, uh, fortunately, I mean, if there's any plus that they got out of it, fortunately for them, they didn't have this on the air where it would have come off as incredibly bad taste and untimely. The only perk that they got out of this is that it's two years after the fact and most people have moved on. Even if what she said was terrible, even what she did was terrible, most people have moved on. Uh, and I said in previous videos, WoW is not a big enough fish for most wrestling fans to stick to and crucify like that. If AEW or WWE had Tessa Blanchard in their roster and those comments or the accusations had come out against her at that time, uh, it would have affected them. She was, They would have cut bait. Wow, not so much. They, they, they seem not to care all that much. They just have moved on. Or I shouldn't even say they moved on. They made a T-shirt about it, for Christ's sake. So uh, <clears throat> they, they, they haven't moved on, but they have moved away from it, and they don't consider that a big enough threat for her not to be there. Or for them not to uh, <laughs> try to sell merch off of it. Speaking of that, how many of you out there actually buy WoW merchandise? Have you actually gone to the, their, st their store on Pro Wrestling Tees and purchased a shirt? Just curious. I mean, you know, that, that's a random thought, but, I, but I'm just a little curious. Look, I wonder how many people actually buy WoW merchandise. They don't have a bunch of it. As far as I know, they only have T-shirts. It's not like they make replica. Let me, let me pronunciate. It's not like they make replica belts or things like that. But it's just you know, little little uh, little point of curiosity there. You know, the shirts. I wonder how the shirts move. They, you know, there's no action figures and mugs and and uh, posters and stuff like that. Just 
as far as I know, it's just T-shirts, but has anybody actually purchased it? I'm sure there has to be, but uh, you know, just, just curious. Moving forward, segment three, Chrissy Vane. Now, there's a name that some of you may recognize, a lot of you may not, because she had not, not only not been involved in wrestling for a long time, she hadn't had a... I should say a major wrestling promotion. She hadn't been involved in wrestling for a long time, period. Her last time, well, she's been back on the independence for some weeks now, but I think the last time preceding that is the week or two she spent on SmackDown just getting ready to get involved against Tori Wilson in the few before she disappeared. And now, so that should give you some idea of how long that's been. That, that had to have been almost 20 years now. But uh, <clears throat> Chrissy Vane with Lana Starr come out the ringside. Lana cuts a promo defending herself on her accusations uh, that she, you know, screwed over Amber O'Neill and treated her bad and kicked her to the curb, et cetera, et cetera. But this is here for two reasons. One, to facilitate and further that angle. And two, to introduce Vane to the WoW audience. Uh, WoW's playing off of the history from over 20 years ago and the, and the history off of indie wrestling with Team Blondage. Now, for those of you not aware, Team Blondage was the, the team that Amber O'Neill and Chrissy Vane were part of back around 2000, 2001. They would be considered the precursor to what the beautiful people became in Impact Wrestling or what uh, Michelle McCool and Lael were in uh, WWE. They were doing that that act probably a good two years before either one of them had started on national television. Um, but no, I mean, you know, this, I can't say that it's a bad thing, you know, but I know here's the weird part that WoW exists in. Like, bringing in Chrissy Vane in a perfect world should be a big deal for them. It should be, uh, gosh, it should be the equivalent of what you see with AEW when they bring in all these people. You know, your, your Adam Coles and your Danielsons and Punks and Keith Lees and so on and so forth. It should be a big deal for the crowd. Unfortunately, it's not. Not because Chrissy Vane isn't talented. It's just that A, she's been off the radar for so long, and B, that she's been uh, independent wrestler for the majority of her career. So there's not a lot of people that have are aware of who she is and her matches and things like that. They haven't had access to it. And more importantly than that is how often do you have legitimate female superstars that they can pull from is like, hey, so-and-so is here. The closest that we've had to that is AJ Lee, and she's not wrestling. She's there, but she's not wrestling. She's there as a commentator. Most of the women who get to superstar status because of WWE or what or whatnot, once they're done with WWE, they just quit. They don't do much else after that. And at this stage... Wow, probably can't afford them. So it's not like they can get a Lita or a Becky Lynch or, you know, Tony Storm or whoever. Maybe maybe they could get Tony Storm. I don't know. But they don't make that kind of effort, <clears throat> generally speaking. It's nice to see Vane there, but it kind of falls under the uh the same umbrella that AEW does. They have something that's brought onto the screen that is expected to be known because of, you know, the fan base that they have. And that, that in and of itself is nothing because before, WoW almost never catered to the wrestling fan. They only dealt with the WoW fan. You know, they, they didn't talk about anybody's history or nothing like that. They, they almost treated it like what the WWF or WWE right now does did back in the day it, unless they were forced to do it there was no other wrestling promotion as far as they were concerned that existed in the world they would just act as we're the WWE and we're, all, and we're the only thing that's wrestling nobody else is out there nobody else exists well you know clearly that 
you know, people were there. They just didn't, you know, they didn't go any further with that. So it puts them in a bad spot, but I want to give Wild this much credit. And that when they do have this, like I said, there aren't a lot of women superstars out there. So they gave her the superstar treatment as much as they could without overdoing it. They talked about, you know, they talked it up. They talked about it. They they educated the listeners. Hey, that's Chrissy Vane. She was part of Team Blonde. So once upon a time, she was a tag team partner of Amber O'Neill, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So they go into that, and you know, they, they, like I said, that promo was there basically to introduce who Chrissy Vane is to the wild audience and facilitate furthering an angle. Chantilla Chelly, the Chantilla. That, oh God, I can't even say it. Chantilla Teller. <laughs> Whew, it's hard. I do not like that name. It's a st- <laughs> I don't like it. I do not like that name. Uh, but that is her opponent. Ray Lynn is the name that she works on, but, uh, on the Indies. But now that is a, a Vane's opponent. And to move along, Vane wins with assists from Lana Starr. As she should. It's her first match. She should not be coming in there losing like Wild seems to tend to do from time to time. Side note, Shanchilla Chella is a dated character. It is a character based off of a, a festival. I mean, we should have moved on. And they got a couple of people on there that's just dated at this point. They did they need to just go ahead and evolve her out of that or, or something because, I mean, what are, why they have her kind of built around a music fest is beyond me to begin with. It sound, seems kind of silly. <sighs> Segment four, we got a recap of Jesse and Amber losing in the tournament to who are going to be the eventual tag team champions, Fire and Adrenaline. <clears throat> And that they're getting their championship match tonight. Now, they talk about the whole thing that, that they were in the tournament with them. And when they had their chance against them, their boots were stolen by the Dixie Darlings, so on and so forth. So it makes sense that they would get a title match because they felt like they were they were cheated. They did not get a fair shake in the tournament. Uh, segment five. Grits and Glam versus Fire and Adrenaline for the Wild Tag Team Championships. This is where I think they kind of, I want to say went off the rails, but I don't, you know, I don't know where they were going here. Uh, Chrissy Vane and Lana Star stay for commentary. And so that is story B, I guess, with the A story being in the ring. And it is there to distract and preoccupy Amber O'Neill, which is exactly what happened. Uh, after Grits and Glenn come outside, I mean, come to ringside, and uh, Jesse's cutting the promo about how they're going to win, so on and so forth, with the old make wrestling great again hat again, something else that's dated. They should move on from that, but you can't do anything about these matches and shows because it's already in the can from two years ago. Um... <clears throat> So we have this. They are getting ready for the match. Vane and Lana Star at at ringside doing commentary with uh, Stephen Dickey and and David McClain. And lo and behold, before the champions come out, we see Exile in the aisleway beating them up. So this is the second beat down that the tag team champions have had from Exile without any. Uh, rebuttal, no promo, you know, nothing. They just have taken an ass kicking and really have disappeared. So they come out, they've beaten up the champions, and they, for all intents and purposes, take their spot in this match. Now, why they take their spot in this match, I don't know. It would seem to me that Exile would want the champions. That's who they attack. They should be going after the tag team championships. So I beat them up and then decide to get into a match against people that you got nothing against to begin with. And and in the kayfabe universe, they shouldn't even be getting paid for this match. Why, why, why participate? The other part is this is a heel versus heel match. Neither one of these teams is supposed to be liked. And I think Amber O'Neill kind of defaults her way into being a baby face here, I guess. 
But it doesn't make a lot of sense. And I notice that Wild seems to do this more often than not. They just put some people together, not really concerning whether they're babyface heel, good or bad. They just appear. So we got Exile and Grits and Glam taking on the, you know, the match after Hosaka cuts a, a promo to make the match in the first place. Now, if you bypass that, you bypass, you know, the uh, them being in the match in the first place, it, it did pretty good. You know, I didn't have any problem with it. And, uh, you know, of course, Jesse Jones, Jesse Smothers, whichever one you prefer, and Amber O'Neill are good enough to where whatever shortcomings anybody in exile may have, they would be able to hold it up. Uh, <clears throat> but this is... I guess the first portion of the exile group that would show signs of them working the free bird rule, if we want to go with that, because it's not Exodus and Genesis this time. It is a Malaya Hosaka and uh, uh, who is it? Gen- uh, Genesis. So we see now that Hosaka is is not just a manager. She's part of the group. And she will swap in and out, apparently, as need be. The story here is that Amber O'Neill, like I said earlier, preoccupied with Lana Starr. We got the commentary, them go on the ongoing running commentary throughout the match. And uh she can't seem to get her focus off of them. The end of the match is Amber O'Neill gets the tag. She comes in, a little bit de- distracted, turns around, gets caught with a DDT from uh, Hosaka. Exile wins. Meanwhile, with Jess, you know the reason that Jesse Jones did not stop this is because she was outside beating up Exodus. I mean, not Exodus, but she was outside beating up Exile. Both members, the other two members. I mean, not literally beating them, but, you know, fending them off by herself, which is kind of funny because, the, you know, the other two, Adrenaline and uh, Fire, couldn't do that at all. But anyway, so they win. They be in exile, and uh, Jesse comes in, and she's kind of giving a mouthful to Amber O'Neill, like, what happened? You were distracted, this, that. And, you know, Amber's like, leave me alone, you know, like as if she doesn't want to hear it. So we see the seeds of problems taking place. So again, I don't know if this was a case of just a pure heel versus heel match, which it seemed like to me, or this is heel versus heel, or heel versus anti-hero, heel versus one heel and and baby face, I don't know. Because again, in that crowd, everybody there should have been uh, the heels. And, And looking at the audience, Honestly, with that, if you didn't have the the edit of adding in crowd noise, I think the audience was just sitting on their hands. I don't I don't think that they really knew what to do or who to cheer for. And I mean, just watch. If you look at this match, if you get a chance, just watch the crowd. Look look out into the audience and see if anybody's excited. I mean, they they pop on the big moves and stuff, but for the most part, they're just kind of sitting there, not really all that involved. Segment five introduces a new face to the wild roster, and it is Venomous. For those of you out there on the West Coast, you know her as Ruby Rays. Uh, there's a vignette that introduces her to the viewing audience, and of course, this sets up for her to have her match right then, right or next. This is good, works for me. And it is going to be Venomous versus Sassy Massey. Uh, that would be segment six. And we're now going to go into the play-by-play. Venomous wins with the hanging neck breaker. Pretty straightforward match. Almost a bit of a squash. And then Venomous cuts the promo after the match. Easy peasy. No problems there. Uh, this is what it should have been. We have a new face coming in. Introduce that face. Introduce her in the ring. She gets a little promo time. We'll move on. 
I, I I have nothing that I can really say about that. I can't certainly can't complain about it. I thought they did a, a fantastic job with that. Uh, if you look at the vignettes, because you know when you talk about characters and names like Venomous in a wild universe, ain't no telling what they may mean. They you know they may mean that that she's a le- legitimate snake or something like that. But no, um, the way they had this kind of set up and framed. It's almost like they are implying that she ran with a gang or something like that without using those words. That's the best way that I could describe that to you. So, you know, we we will see as that goes on, you know, with Venomous appearing in the low rider and all that good stuff like that on the mean streets of L.A. Segment seven, Faith the Lioness, who we now know is in WWE, NXT 2.0, has a backstage vignette with Lana star Chrissy Vane, and it looks like uh, Faith is being set up to be replaced. There's, a, there's an exchange of words there, basically saying, you know, <laughs> uh, do, mind what you're doing and do what you're supposed to do, otherwise... Dun, dun, dun. You know what I mean? So <laughs> we're gonna move you, move you out, and Chrissy will be in. She'll be the top girl here. Which again, I don't really understand what that whole faith the line this line of star dynamic is about. Anyway, why? You know, why is she there? Why? Why is she act like she needs her? It wasn't like she was doing badly when she didn't have her. From what I can remember, they never established that Lana has some sort of Oh, I got the client cloud and I got pull and this, you know they they never really established all that stuff. But, you know, maybe maybe I'm digging too deep. I don't know. Uh, segment 8, Jungle Girl, Tessa Blanchard and the Beast history package essentially recapping the main event scene. Uh then we go into the main event. Jungle Girl versus Tessa Blanchard. Again, as I just said, with Grits and Glam and and, uh, Exile, this is, in essence, a heel versus heel match. Jungle Girl has been framed as the bitter veteran. Tessa Blanchard has been framed as the bad former champion. And now they are facing off against each other. Uh, <clears throat> in a really good match. Now, I will say, if you get the chance, go go and look at it. I have said this about Erica Porter for a number of uh, podcasts and years at this point, a.k.a. Jungle Girl. Uh, she's a physical marvel. You know, it's a shame that, you know, she's got hit with cancer. Uh, but she's a physical marvel. And she really was hanging in there with Tessa, and here's the thing. I said in the reviews of the last season that they had a perfect out with Jungle Girl. I don't know if they was trying to do it on purpose. I don't know if that was just a, a happy coincidence, which is what I said then. I said, but you got a perfect out with this woman. Tessa Blanchard and Jungle Girl had a match uh, what last season. And... Tessa won, but she won with Jungle Girl's foot across the bottom rope. When she rolled her up, she rolled her foot so high that it touched the bottom rope. And I remember saying at that point, that is the perfect out. Because that gives Jungle Girl the ability to say, okay, yeah, I lost, but you know, not really. The referee had to be paying attention, should have cut that match so I could, you know, so I could have continued, and I probably would have won had I had you know that that opportunity. Well, now they used it here to put a little bit of seed of doubt in that recap that she lost, but she lost barely, and not really. She got her foot on on the bottom rope. 
So now we're gonna settle it here. And they, you know, they they did a lot. They went on the outside, brawled, you know, in the front row a little bit. Not a, not something that you generally get out of a wild match or for a wild audience. They don't typically lean in that direction, but that's what they got. And outside of it going into the front row, they take it back into the ring. And again, physically, you know, fantastic between the two of them. The end result was is that Jungle, Jungle Girl pinned Blanchard after a chair shot. One, two, three. Jungle Girl wins the match, and she is set up now as the number one contender for the Beast and the WOW Championship. It was a uh, entertaining show. And up until this point, I don't think I've had any episodes that I've watched of WOW that were not entertaining, quite honestly. They seem to uh, continue to put on or at least cut together good shows, good uh, backstage segments and what have you. They all feel, uh, ring-wise, they all feel pretty good. One of the complaints that WoW has had, even from me, is that some of those women just did not need to be in a wrestling ring. I don't know why they're there, because they they aren't talented enough to be on a national stage, but, you know, it was WoW. But every time they've come back, that's been less and less of the case. They have, they being WoW, have gone to reach out and find women who are good at what they do and can come into that company and start having matches and good matches almost immediately rather than what they had been doing where they would just we'll hire some people who are athletically inclined and we'll teach them they can learn well everybody can't do that everybody and certainly not inside of a year some people need a little bit more than that and being on national television is not the way that they should be learning their craft. See NXT 2.0 or WWE main event. Because they're just as guilty as anybody. But Wild should not be doing that. They no longer need to do that. Hopefully AJ Lee will steer them away from doing that. And whoever else has David McClain's ear. It's not a necessity. You can hire people who want to be a part of WoW who are never in wrestling. That's fine. But they don't need to be fast-tracked into a wrestling ring like had happened in the past. But anyhow, that was uh, episode 23, and that was episode 23 in this full review. Be sure to tune in uh, next time for another WoW review and from top to bottom we got got uh, episode 24 coming up, and uh, I can't wait to see. You know, I'm taking these things a bit at a time. Yes, I do not have to wait. I can go and binge all of them. I'm not much of a binge watch TV watcher to begin with, but I could. I could. I could go in there right now. Like I said, if you want to watch it, you go on the CW app, you go on Pluto TV, and you can watch all of these. And you certainly, if you're going to look at it, you certainly want to be done with it by the time September rolls around because that's when supposedly the new wild season will begin. And we all got to be prepared for that. I certainly have to be prepared for it if I choose to go forward with uh, more views from wild. I'm interested to see what they are in planning on, though. Not that much I am very interested in seeing how this progresses. You can also support the show and support the channel if you're listening to this on uh, any platform outside of YouTube. Make sure that you uh, like the show, please. I would greatly appreciate it. You can also leave a review from wherever platform that you happen to be in. We are on greater podcast platforms, plural. You should be able to find us anywhere. All you got to do is just hit WPN and uh, search. WPN Wrestling and Search. You can get that. 
Speaking of WPN Wrestling, that is the name of the website as well, WPNWrestling.com. It's the nexus for everything that we do. We have a podcast. It drops there. If you have videos, you probably get the link there. If you want to see our social media, you definitely can go in there too. If you want to see some of the shows and matches, it is a 24-hour stream right there on the uh, the page, the home page. So we got a lot of that, a lot of stuff that you can uh, check into. And uh, that is also very, very uh, helpful for us to uh, do that. And if you are listening to this on YouTube, I said if you're checking it outside of YouTube before, but if you are listening to this on YouTube, well then, like, subscribe, and share, please. It is the thing that helps YouTube's almighty algorithm. We're going to be able to get these shows out to where people can see them and listen to, possibly download with the links that I leave in in the uh, description. Well, then just uh, support it by giving it a like. Support it by uh, going in and uh, watching it from beginning to end, subscribing to the channel. Those things do uh, help quite a bit, and it helps get the, the word out about what we do. And, of course, you can do the, the simple thing and just tell a friend. Tell a friend. See, look, I'm not asking for money. Be nice if you gave money, if you choose to do that. You know, I know it's, it's tough times out there, folks. So, you know, getting anybody to separate from their hard-earned dollars, me included, is, you know, not always an easy thing to do. But should you feel that way, hey, we got a donate tab right there on the home page of WPNWrestling.com. And with that, I think it is time to close up the shop until we go into the next review. And we will be checking that out a little bit later. Like I said, I'm excited for it because I know they got a bunch of stuff that I'm either going to give a hard time to or I'm going to love it. One or the other. There is no in-between. And with that, this is a short episode, but and with that, This is Mr. Green saying that this is Mr. Green saying so long, folks, and we will see you on the next go round. Good night, everybody. Thank you for listening to the WPN's Rights and Wrongs of Pro Wrestling. If you have questions or comments, please contact us via our Facebook or our YouTube channel at the Women's Pro Wrestling Network. If you're new to the WPN, feel free to subscribe to our channel and like our page. We appreciate your support. Thank you again for listening.